I'm like a <laughs> like Charlie Chaplin moment. <laughs> hey everyone. <laughs> this is um, Yay Math and YayMath.org. Yay Math! We are at the YouTube studios live in Los Angeles, California. And in this beautiful studios with all these lights surrounding me, popping me in the face, we're talking about solving systems of inequalities by graphing. This is an Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 topic. Um, I hope you find this informative. Let's talk about it. Let's do two lines. Okay, let's talk about this. In previous sections, we've talked about that this is an equation of a line. Okay, let's see how it looks upon graphing. Let's do this one in blue. We're going patriotic today, baby. The red, white, and blue. And black, because we're in the black, baby. Profit. That didn't happen. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Let's go uh, slope-intercept form, in which this line is the y-intercept. Uh, not this line, this value, and this is the slope, okay? The y-intercept is negative 3, so we go down 3. Slope is 2 over 1. That means rise of 2, run of 1. Rise of 2, run of 1. Champion, and we graph the line. You'll notice that I dotted the line. And a lot of people don't understand why that's the case. Why do we dot the line? Okay? It's not just a rule that we need to memorize. We need to understand it so that it makes sense to us, right? So that we're not forgetting some randomly memorized rule that doesn't really resonate. Here's why. Every point that's on this line should fit inside this equation. All right? So we'll do a brief example. Let's say this was negative 3, 0, negative 3. Then we went up 2 over 1. Then we went up 2 over 1. This point right here. This point is 2, 1. Let's see what happens when we plug 2, 1 into there. So we have y. Oh, yeah. Let's actually write the line. You're right. y less than 2x minus 3. And now we're going to plug in 2, 1. So we said x was 2, and y is 1. And then we bring down the rest of the equation. Less than 2 times minus 3. So then we have 1 is less than. This is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. Minus 3 is 1. Is this a true statement? Is 1 less than 1? It's not. That's why, even though 2, 1 is on this line technically, it's not a solution for this particular line, all right? Had it been equals, like this, then yes, we would do a solid line because every point on the line would fit, and the result of this would be 1 equals 1. And that's okay because every point on the line fits inside the equation. In this case, because there's a less than, the point on the line does not fit in the equation. So to represent the line, we have to dot it. But the saga continues. Not only do we do a dotted line, but we have another issue at hand. There are other points that make this line happy that you can plug in to make it work. Like, for example, what if I pick something, let's say, like out here? Two, three, four, five, like this point. What do you think? Do you think the point five, zero? We'll work inside there. Let's try it out. 5, 0. Instead of y, we'll have 0. Instead of x, we'll have 5. Let's see if it works. Let's see if it works. Plug it in. Less than 2 times minus 3. So that would be 0 is less than 10 minus 3 is 7. Is this a true statement? 0 less than 7? Giving it away? Yes, it is. So that means that this is a solution. And I'm going to spare the drama. This is a solution, and this is a solution, and this is a solution, and this is a solution. How do I know that all these are solutions? How do I know? I'll tell you how I know, all right? Here, it's hiding right in there. Y is less than this stuff. And if Y is less than this stuff, and this is the Y axis, when you think of less than, do you think more, like big numbers, 
or do you think small numbers, right? If y is less than, are you thinking big y values or small y values? And for me, the way I thought of teaching this is like, well, if y is less than, that must mean small numbers. So I'm like basically going down from the line. So here's our line, and we have to think of every place that's down from the line, and that's all this is down from the line, all this is down from the line. Meaning, all these are values, all these are points, all these are values that work in this line. See that? They all work in there. And if I picked another point, like negative 5, 0, you'll see that it does not work within the inequality. So everything that's down from the line, down means y is a measure of up and down. And if we want to go less than, then we have to pick down. Y is small, small y values, all right, below the line. Let's see if we can put that to the test with our red line. Red line to Shady Grove. It's the Washington, D.C. Metro. So now we're going over here. Slope and y-intercept. Positive 2 is the y-intercept. Boom. Slope. Down 1, right 2. Hook it up. Down 1, right 2. There it is. Down 1, right 2. There it is. And then we look at it. Since we have an or equal to, just like we said before, that's a solid line because the equals would make every point on the line happy. I once had a student who had a little trick with this. She said, if you see the or equal to, pick up the pencil and draw the line. <laughs> that was cute, ninth grade girl. Pick up the pencil, draw the line, okay? I'm not above little gimmicks, little mnemonic learner devices. As long as you understand, that because it's or equal to, any point that's on the line will fit in the equation, inequality in this case. And we ask ourselves, since it's y is greater than, we are now going to slim shady. We're going to shade either up or down from the line. Up or down from the line, y is greater than. So, reshading up or down? If y is a measure of up and down, and you're saying y is greater than, that would imply we're shading up. No, I should have left this one. Up! We're shading up. So we're thinking everything that's above the line, above, above the line, above the line today. There it is. Okay. And the solution for this system, a system is two or more equations together, the solution is every area that works for both. Okay? So let this be a political message. It's not just the red stuff that matters. It's not just the blue stuff that matters. It's the purple stuff. Mm. It's the purple stuff. Mm. Get it together, America. This is where we need to live, right here. And this is the solution for this system. And this is the solution for the United States of America. Um, okay, we're going to graph this system, right? This how has three separate equations. Um, and we're going to solve, like, graph them one after the other. Oh, you know, we got to go green. Sorry. This is the new America. <laughs> go green. So let's put this one down first. Green, and then we'll get back to patriotic. So y is less than 1. You recall when you say y equals 1, you recall what kind of line that is? If you don't, just basically say, where is y equal to 1? And you could say right there. And then ask yourself, OK, that's true. Where else is y equal to 1? Well, you could say there. You could say there. Notice I'm changing x, but I'm not going up and down. And since I'm not going up and down, y is constant. This is a constant function of y equals 1. Dotted line or solid? There's no pencil to pick it up. Don't pick up the pencil. No line to draw. So this is a dotted line. And you'll also notice that since it's an inequality, that implies shading. You know what's cool about shading is that you're definitely guaranteed to have 50% chance of getting it right. You're either shading up or down from the line. In this case, y is less than. If this is the y-axis and y is a measure of up or down, up or down, if y is less than, do you think that would be down or up? Indeed, less than means down. Now I'm going to be artistic, and I'm just going to remember to shade down later. 
I even make a little note to myself, down, down. I'm not going to shade the entire thing because I want to wait for the overlap. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, all this stuff. Moving on, let's go to red. Okay, y equals mx plus b, mx plus b. This b is the y-intercept again, so we'll start at a y-intercept of 1, put it down, and the slope of a rise of negative 1, and then a run of 3. So that would be down 1, right 3. There it is. And then we could form our line, pick up the pencil, draw the line. This is the pencil here, what we mean, or equal to. That means it's a solid line. And we're saying greater than, meaning shading up. So that means greater than is up from this red area. All this up from red. So, so far within these two, we have down from green and up from red. Right here, like a boss. Down from green, up from red. Now let's go blue. Blue. Hopefully you can already anticipate it. If y equals 1, horizontal line. x equals 5, vertical line. Here x equals 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Put it down. Here x is 5, 2. Here x is 5, 2. Here x is 5, 2. Dotted or solid? Exactly. Or equal to? Means solid line. And are we shading this way of the line? Which is left, or are we shading right? Again, here's the x-axis. x is less than, do you agree less than would be lower, would be left. So that's left from blue. Also a political statement. I'm like more left to blue, generally speaking. So uh, you'll find me in Oregon. <laughs> so where is the only place that's down from green, up from red, and left from blue, that's this zone, the black zone, right in there. And the reason that this is important to shade is to recognize that every point within this region will make all three of these happy. They'll fit inside all three of these. So it looks like one point could be like 4, 0. If we plugged in 4, 0, the point, this would be true, this would be true, and this would be true. Like it would fit, it would work, it would be appropriate to plug in 4, 0, and I guess the official word is satisfy. 4, 0 would satisfy these three equations, which is a good thing in life to be able to be satisfied. Final challenge. I put this on my uh, math tests, and the students struggle with it until they get it, and they actually really enjoy the challenge. All right? Here's the challenge. It's simply phrased, but it's a little more complicated to do. It is. Um, create three lines that, when shaded correctly, form a triangle in the fourth quad, in the fourth quadrant. Okay, I'll explain what that means. Let's draw our axes here. All right, a reminder of the quadrants starting up here where everything's positive. Here x is positive and y is positive. And we go counterclockwise. First quadrant, second, third, and fourth. So the goal is, remember in the previous problem, we created a triangle that was shaded. Right now we're going to create our own lines. It's a really fascinating exercise. We're going to create our own lines to form a triangle anywhere in here. Any line we want to do. Any lines we want to do. And, so, and it has to be appropriately shaded. So, you know, we could, we could have a little fun. We could say like, well, remember the x equals 5? Remember that one? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We could start with what we know. I haven't really rehearsed this. We're just messing around. Let's go with dotted line here. If we want our triangle maybe to be somewhere in here, and you agree that this is the line x and 5? Are we shading to the left or to the right? Looks like left. Left is small. You'll notice I said not or equal to. Okay, so that's one. 
How about another line? Maybe another su super simple line, right? Maybe we could do this guy. That could be a part of our triangle, right? On this. What's the equation of this line? You recall it's horizontal. X equals a number, vertical. Therefore, horizontal lines would have to start with what letter? I know I'm being re repetitive on purpose. Repetitive on purpose, repetitive on purpose. But it actually helps. It's a learning tool. So let's put that in green. X is a number vertical. Y is a number horizontal. And there it is. This is the line. Let's actually make it solid. Where Y is constantly zero. Y is constantly zero on this line. X is changing for sure. Here X is five. Here X is 10. But Y is zero here. Y is zero here. Y is always zero. And if we want our triangle to be down here, Hopefully we agree that this will be less than, and since I made the line solid, less than or equal to. Two down, one to go. Now in red, what do you think? I mean, we gotta do a triangle that's completely covered in that line. I mean, if you wanna be super simplistic, we can do something like that, right? This could work. So first of all, ask yourself, is it shading up or down? That's a good way to think of it. Hopefully you can see that since we want this triangle, let's actually make it our target area. Hopefully you can see that it's shading up. All right, now we need the equation of the line, okay? So there's so many things we can do. I wanna make it simple for us. MX plus B. What is the slope and what is the y-intercept? The y-intercept is out here. So we can see a y-intercept of plus zero. And then we have our slope. Oops, there you go. We need our slope to go right here. If you look closely, this is down one, right one. I could have done down two, right one. It doesn't matter, I could do whatever I want. But I'm just doing a super simple example. Down one, right one, that would be down one, Right one, come on, easel E, stay up. And then if we were to simplify all this, do you agree that Y is greater than or equal to? Negative one over one is really just negative one. And I don't need to write negative one here, all right? A lot of people really insist on having this negative one here. Yeah, you know who you are, you know. You know that you need to put this down. I'm telling you, be free. Be free as I am free of the cap now, okay? You don't need the negative one here. You know that the slope is negative one without it, okay? Step up your game. You don't need it anymore, all right? This is tough love. I believe in you. So this is a slope of negative one. Same with this, by the way. You don't need to write plus zero, okay? This is years and years of like pleading with my students. Like, I need the zero there. I need the negative one over one, but I need it. I'm like, no, you don't. Let it go. It's going to be okay. Done. Because plus zero is unnecessary. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And we're shading up from the line, which is all this action. Okay, hopefully that made sense. That's a good little challenge. Um, yeah, in the coursework that I'm gonna provide, that's gonna be actually one of the test questions, but it might be over here or over here. All right, so be able to just move the lines around and shade appropriately. And if you can do that, then you got it. You mastered it, all right? Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Fish out of water dance.